Okay. Uh, the agenda today uh, is as uh, we will talk about the um, MPLS payload and the metadata in MPLS payload. Um, discussion on the this is a continuation from last time. The discussion on the first level um, applicability of the generic delivery functions uh, to MPLS. Um, Jeffrey uh, Zhang. Uh, uh, volunteered to talk about this uh, applicability of the catalog that we talked about last week for metadata blocks. Uh, I think Edward suggested that, and there was a follow up email on this. So if, if he's present, we can uh, talk about that. And um, we have the uh, multiple the, the presence of multiple uh, gals uh, generic associated label. Uh, in the same label stack. So uh, that's something that Greg wanted to talk about, and I'm hoping he's also present uh, and he can talk about that. Uh, we will talk about next steps, and I'm open to adding or modifying this agenda. So the idea was to suggest an agenda, agenda uh, in advance. Uh, so feel free to add uh, items if, uh, if you have any. I'll give it a little more time for people to come up and uh, object if they need to. I don't object to the agenda, but I think it's implausible that we'll cover it all in an hour. In an hour. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, uh, yeah. We'll see how we can uh, uh, steer through the agenda. Uh, but you're right. Um, we have one and a half hours this time. Uh, it's not two hours. Uh, I hope the, the WebEx got updated on in your calendar. Um, is there any preference, um, at least the word from your side? Uh, how do we want? Uh, you know, I, I suggested this order, but you know, we can talk, we can jump to any uh, uh, one of these bullets. No, I'm yeah. fine with taking them one at a time. Okay, all right. Um, um, I'm okay to take minutes, but if, if anybody can help take in minutes as well, uh, that would be great. Uh, anybody is willing or has some free uh, hands for typing minutes? Uh, volunteer. If you can do so, please uh, shoot me an email with whatever minutes you took and we consolidate and uh, Publish them towards the end. Okay, there was uh, a thread, an email thread about uh, you know the, the what what MPLS payloads exist today and uh, you know uh, how we uh, identify if we do we need to identify what an MPLS payload is. Um, so the, it was suggested that it's dominantly IP and Ethernet, uh, and that's uh, probably true. Uh, um, but we also have, um, you know, a, a OEM data that can be carried uh, uh, today. Um, we we do want to extend this. Is that the, the, I, I presume the objective is that we can, uh, you know, uh, carry more uh, more than just IP and Ethernet. Well, what we do already, and I think it's important to remember that. Um... Pseudowires, for example, a whole family of things in pseudowires that get carried um, over MPLS. Um, and then, uh, and DetNet is also carried over MPLS. So um, I don't think it matters that most of the traffic is IP or Ethernet. What matters is that there are many, uh, is there, that there is a large variety of MPLS payloads out there, and we have to. Uh, um, whatever we do, they have to be able to continue to operate. Do we need to identify the payload? Uh, is that an objective we have in mind that we identify what are we carrying in MPLS? That's an open question, really. Right, right. right. So, so you mean? Let's be clear, clear. I think what you mean is, is it important that we identify in the packet? rather than through the control plane, what the payload yeah. is. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
that's what I meant. In the packet, there's a field that says what uh, what is the payload. But uh, indeed, in the control plane could have uh, programmed the, the the label at the egress with a context. But for a transit node, it will remain an open question because the control plane wouldn't uh, have programmed that label. It's not the owner. Uh, the tra transit wouldn't be the owner. Well, unless it needed to be. So um, the... Um... And I can never Greg will remind me what it's called. The uh, the the transit time uh, calculator that knew what the payload that kind of knew that a control word was there, even though uh, it was looking at the top label. So the top fec uh, knew about it. So we can always tell uh, the the P route is what's going on if we're prepared to grant a new fec. So this is all about I think. Um, essentially, the, the SR family of uh, protocols wanting to know what is being carried without using the control plane, which is how we have normally done it. Right. The, yeah, the context is not programmed with the top label. Uh, and we need to indicate that uh, we're carrying something in the payload. Right. <clears throat> being able to identify the payload type seems to be be a topic forever. Um, I don't know if it will make any difference this time, but at least uh, in in case of the, the uh, GDF uh, proposal, it, as a byproduct, we can easily identify the, the payload type. Okay. We will wait for the GDF, and I think that's useful to... Uh... So, so I guess the question is, what is not knowing the payload stopping us doing at the moment? Uh, well, I mean, people are talking about ECMP on a transit node and being able to identify its IP or not. Uh, well, hang on a second, but but we have a technique for that already. The entropy label allows you to um, uh, do ECMP without inspecting the payload. That's right. If you use it, yes. Oh. Yeah, but the, the, I think the point is that that's an already existing solution to that problem. And so we need bigger benefits than ECMP to justify being able to tell whether the payload is IP or not. If you're getting multiple payloads, uh, multiple metadata, uh, which is the second bullet, really, I'm jumping. Would you need a cascade of uh, what's next? Uh, so you have uh, a kind of a next header pointer or next header uh, type? Uh, indeed, I think there was some, um, there was a uh, 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 proposal in 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 the past that try to provide the uh, explicit uh, identifier particle identifier in uh, to MPS, but as we know that the current MPS doesn't have such a me mechanism. So maybe it's better to have a you know explicit you know product identifier defined in MPS header to do that. I'm not sure this is a good. <laughs> Good idea yeah. not. Yes, I, I agree with Mark. I think it's a useful feature to know the uh, what exactly payload is. So uh, uh, since here we are also proposing, uh, we, can, we will support more um, function uh, instruction headers. Uh, so this time we think, uh, I think we should make the thing right. Uh, if whatever we design, we should be able to Point to uh, point out what's a protocol following the uh, header following the uh, MPS label stack, and uh, as a, a byproduct of that, we also know actually what's in the payload. I think that's a good feature. I I, I think it's fair to ask for a good feature, but I, I you know I I stand by Stewart just so that we uh, um, you know we have a, a strong reason. Uh, besides, it's a good feature. Why is it useful to you? 
because uh, if you add anything uh, in between, you will you will need to know what it is. So if you have this in place, then it, it's just uh, you know for free you will know what's uh, in the payload. So I think that's just a a a pre -pre -pre byproduct of the, this uh, design actually to solve. It. I think I think uh, missing the indicator of the payload. Um, is actually a drawback of the current uh, MPS specification. So we can fix that. Okay, so just to, to capture the, the, uh, uh, the thought, uh, you're saying that, um, that if you carry multiple metadata, then uh, an next header type would be useful. Yeah, you will need to know that anyway. Uh, I think if you're carrying multiple metadata, you do need to know it, and that would be useful. Um, but uh, could, could I say about uh, something about this? Because it's the similar problem which we have in uh, Spring in uh, so-called programmability. But why all this programmability, from my point of view, really a little bit make makes sense? It makes sense. Why it makes sense? Because uh, if you have many flows and you try to be really uh, really good granularity uh, you would like to have separate uh, separate behavior of one flow from another flow and as a result you have many flows if you have many flows then you have an n square problem and this n square problem is uh, difficult to solve on con control plane level but it's easy to solve on the data plane level because if you have separate flow which has separate uh, the different for example type of uh, metadata uh, from different flow and then it would be easy for us to, to, to look to this particular thing without control plane strain because uh, n square problem for control plane RSVP, for example is a, is a very difficult for that reason it, it, it has a little bit sense i mean the people who do the, who did it for spring for so called programmability probably they did it right probably we could put a little bit more complexity to data plane but uh, as a result we could greatly simplify control plane Snow, are you up there? Mm -hmm. Well, hmm. you don't have anything to say, Stuart, on this? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Um, this is just for different flows. What if, uh, to distinguish between different flows, is that what this proposal is for? I'm not sure about the different flows. Uh, I, I I don't know what what he meant. What you meant, Edward, by multiple flows, uh, because um, every flow has a flow identifier. Uh, no, 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 different the, services. Uh, for example, different services. One oh, service needs ne, ne, needs one treatment, another service needs different treatment. And if you have many such things, uh, it, it is not scalable for control plane, but it's still scalable for data plane. If you have uh, two different services running on pseudo wires, then they are actually pseudo wires, not that you identify by metadata, not the service. Yeah, so if you've got two different pseudo wires, they have different labels to identify them, and they have a whole bunch of different parameters. I mean, one so, could be like an Ethernet pseudo wire. You could also be in the same uh, PE, be terminating an ATM pseudo wire or a uh, TDM pseudo wire. So, if we take the two different services running on Ethernet pseudo wire, yeah, what? No, they're not. They're not. No, 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 no. Two different services do not run on the same pseudo wire. Two different Ethernet pseudo wires. If I have two different Ethernet pseudo wires, they're completely different, right? But so what part are we storing in the headers to identify the service inside them? Uh, hang on a second. The, the pseudo wire will deliver an Ethernet packet. That's the end of its job. Different pseudo wires uh, are identified by different <coughs> pseudo wire labels. They have to be. Uh, so so I, I can tell that they're different, right? So what do you want? What do you want to do? Do you want to do something inside the Ethernet? No, the question was the attach more metadata to MPLS packet to identify what it's carrying. And, well, why, why, one... so I, I don't need to do that for pseudo wires. I already have an architecture that works for pseudo wires. And so the service pseudo wire is carrying that service information you want to embed in a lower transport? 
but in the metadata is that the no, I mean, um, sorry, I'm not quite sure I understand what problem we're solving. I'm, I'm trying to understand Edward's uh, suggestion that uh, service yeah. identifying information be included in the MPLS. If, if so, I may say something, I think that the existing MPLS architecture uh, already solves uh, the problem of payload type or metadata identifiers. For aggressed uh, LARs, yes. this is already done. Yes. The only problem, as I see it, is if you need to understand the payload type, which I am not sure is really necessary, or some other, some metadata presence uh, by the transit LSRs, because they do not know anything. Usually, the aggressed L uh, LAR user usually is one that has allocated. End to end the the application label, be it a VPN label or pseudo wire label or who cares, or and so it knows exactly what 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 uh, what is supposed to follow and can use okay. that. Uh, the transit LSRs and that is exactly the database scalability of MPLS doesn't know typically doesn't know anything about these labels and what, what they have been allocated for and it cannot be done and uh the, and i understand the, that uh, uh and uh, do, do, doing it differently uh will re revert the the n square problem that edward has, has mentioned from the control plane the data plane and uh, saying that uh, this problem is simple to handle in the data plane, I think is uh, an exaggeration, uh, especially since we have uh, uh, so, well one uh, of uh, MPLS labels is uh, all there. Uh, it is a okay key for uh, in most cases, but if you go to N square, uh, you will find the you will this will be consumed very soon. Um, uh, let me let me um, propose particular example. Imagine the situation that uh, for troubleshooting purposes, for example, you would like to put timestamp in some particular metadata here. There. Time timestamp or maybe some other information doesn't matter, which should be put in the middle of, of the network in the in the transit um, LSR. Uh, in this case, uh, you need to look uh, which one packet has this particular metadata, metadata, which one packet does not have uh, this metadata. Then you should look in, in this information. Of course, you you, you could say that oh, we will. Will never support such functionality as to timestamp, timestamp, for example, or some particular additional check <coughs> in the in the middle. Then fine, then fine. But if you yeah. will, then yeah, sorry, Edward, uh, sorry. The right, you provide an, an excellent example. They have pointed that this problem has been uh, studied and uh, Stuart, uh, Greg, uh, and uh, some other people, including myself, have already published an RFC on that. Which says uh, it's exactly the RFC that Stuart has uh, refers to under the title of uh, which deals with the uh, residence time, which is form you can consider as a, as a variation of data of timestamp. Uh, well, measuring uh, LSP uh, 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 residence time. Uh, what I've right. done there was uh, very simple. You know which you know. Your, the control plan tells you uh, where the nodes that can handle this uh, mod, uh, measure the the uh, residence on the, uh, on your on a pass allocated, and uh, the TTL of the uh, of of these packets packets carrying it uh, is adjusted so that. Uh, these packets, uh, these uh, LSRs always catch your packet, and uh, you use the generic allocation uh, associated channel uh, label GAL and an appropriate header uh, to, to indicate that it has been trapped due to TTL expiration. But uh, what you have to do with it is to add the, to measure the residence time and add it when the packet is sent forward. So there is an answer to that. 
Uh, I'm the... not sure. Uh, that is not that's not what we're looking for, Alex. Is uh, using TTL uh, method uh, is not acceptable for. Uh... There's no TT... oh, no, There's no TTL method needed in RFC eighty one sixty nine. Uh, I ask, uh, can I ask a clarifying question? When we talk about payload type, are we talking about the original, uh, the payload type like uh, IP packet or Ethernet packet, or are we talking about what well, we need to know that uh, if a method like, uh, follows uh, NPOS label step? Well, we definitely, if we're including um, meta, any form of metadata, we do need to know that it's there. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we can then ask the question is, do the P nodes need to know, but the PEs absolutely need to know. Yeah. I, I agree that there is an indicator uh, that is needed to say that we're carrying metadata, whatever the indi indi we agree on the indicator is. But once we know that metadata is there, the structure of the metadata should be extensible so, so that um, you know, either we have... Um, a, a, a structure that is chained, uh, cascaded, that tells what is the next top block. Right. By, by, by the way, I, I, I think the uh, term metadata here is kind of misleading because we are not only talking about data here, actually uh, we are thinking about uh, some, some header with the instructions and the metadata. So I think the term here. Right, yes, yeah, yeah, and no, I, I do agree. I would like to find a better term for essentially supplementary instructions and associated data. Okay, so I I, I, I have a feeling that uh, uh, both problem with indicating the, the, the uh, what kind of metadata is following and uh, if we need if uh, uh, needed uh, to uh, to tell uh, what the original panel type is. Both that can actually be uh, uh, be solved by uh, in the GDF proposal. Maybe we can come back to that later when, when, when I talk about the GDF. Uh, do we need that for all the packets or just for some specific packets? Because my guess is that we need we do not need it for. All the packets because MPLS is working quite nicely without this today. If we need it for some specific packets, then I'd say that uh, putting something like uh, GAV at the top of the label stack, uh, which would indicate that uh, the generic associated header, which uh, defines the, the, the type of data, follows the label stack. Uh, and uh, if it, it, all that the difference with GAL is that the router, uh, this and GAL is, would, would be requested to put it back uh, uh, on, on the packet it transmits uh, after handling, uh, similar to what we, we do with the router alert. So it would be a kind of uh, combination between the two. So, so uh, my, my, there multiple proposals, in fact, uh, presented in IDF 110. I think in the objective in the meeting is to agree that uh, we are, on, you know, at least define the requirements and are we on the right track? And then, uh, you know, we can talk about solutions. I'm sure there are multiple that. Uh, were... There's, there are certainly multiple indicator methods and that we need to work through. And there are multiple structures um, that we could think about for. Um, uh, whatever we're going to call the stuff, the stuff after the stack before the payload. Um, there's the classic EH um, type methods. There's also a method that I submitted over in um, RTGWG that uses uh, pointer techniques that I think is actually more powerful than the EH techniques, but that, that's really in its infancy at the moment. So, um, yeah, I, I think we're at the moment just sort of in terms of solutions, collecting together the various, uh, doing two things. We're connecting the requirement and collecting uh, the candidate um, solutions so we can map them to the requirement. Yep. yep. Um, okay. Um, I will note it down what you're proposing, uh, uh, Alex. Uh, but uh, just 
just one important point this uh, particular technique or this particular way how to um, disclose that we have additional header should be compatible to the current operation of current uh, boxes and it means that uh, of course uh, after uh, the labels take they will try to you to see is it ipv6 or ipv4 follow and if uh, they will see that it's ipv4 or ipv6 but in reality it would be not ipv4 or ipv6 they could uh, break uh, uh, they yeah. There is absolutely no question that if what follows is not V4 or V6, um, you have to you you have to do two things. You have to defeat any attempt to um, do to do in packet inspection on it, and we know how we do that. And you have to indicate what the heck it is somehow, or other either um, in the control plane or in the data plane, and um, uh yeah you have to provide some way of figuring out what on earth you're supposed to do to it and there are several there are two entities that may need to know there's the there's the p router that may need to know if the expectation is that it will do something on the packet on the fly and um there's also the um the pe router which uh, is clearly going to have to dispose of this lot but explosion includes taking all kinds of actions. So I, 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 one... I, I, I suspect we may end up with two indicators in the packet for anything, uh... we're, going to, for anything we're going to do on the P router. Then one additional indica indication could be uh, some special number three seven whatever uh, of, uh from uh, ip address i mean IP, ip protocol type space because if we will take uh, any permission to use something from ip protocol space like three for example it would be enough for indication it would be definitely fine well, hang, yeah. hang, hang on a second i don't think there's enough there's enough if you're thinking of doing the type by the first nibble then there aren't enough of them no, yeah, no, 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 I, no, 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 no. I mean that uh, uh, this number three, for example, will just tell us that uh, okay, we have some uh, enhanced uh, MPLS uh, here. There's some something like metadata, metadata, whatever. Uh, and structure of this metadata inside it is, it will, is, will, is, will have additional no, information. Yeah, that is incredibly you, risky, though, as we discovered in the pseudowire space. Yeah, I, I think yeah. Uh, you you still need some indicator in the label stack to tell what what follows. Yeah, once, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Once, once you have that, the first enable is not very important because you, right. you you first need so, to so, interpret. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so so remember there are there are there are there are routers still in the wild that are sending native Ethernet packets directly over MPLS. And the best we could get in the pseudo IR working group was to negotiate that we now, I can't remember the exact words, but basically we see we highly recommend the use of the control word with uh, pseudo wires, but we have still not got to the point where of deprecating um, systems that don't use the pseudo wire, uh, don't, don't use the control word, which means that the thing that immediately follows the MPLS label stack could be any value from naught to 15. We have okay. we had we had complaints about the operation of pseudo wires in Nanoc because uh, what was happening was that people were ECMPing on the wrong thing, just because uh, someone had um, had used um, um, you know, the old-fashioned approach of Ethernet directly over MPLS. But uh, Stewart, if if the first nibble is zero, then then that uh, problem is not there of of uh you know of uh of etmp well, well remember the first the first yeah the, the, all that is telling you is we do not know what is here but it's definitely not ipv4 or v6 That's exactly all zero is so, telling you exactly so if if we have an indicator as was mentioned that i am carrying uh something after the mpls header and the first nibble is zero then uh we can you know, we we can we can extend now the the payload and we can define a new TLV if we need it. Right. So I think we are getting into the solutions. Uh, so maybe uh, the, we we can talk about uh, yeah. the, the, those solutions specifically later. Okay. There are lots okay. and lots of solutions that. Uh, I agree. I agree. I'll back out. I'll back out on the solution. Okay. 
but um, I think we can certainly say there is a requirement that you know from the label stack that what follows is, is that if you want to directly interpret what follows, um, you have to have some indication in the label stack. Whether that's a thing in the label stack that tells you that the thing after the label stack will tell you what it is, or whether it's something in the label stack, either directly or through the control plane that tells you, that is up for discussion. But fundamentally, the uh, the label stack has to tell you some way or other that what follows the label stack is something you need to interpret. Maybe to amend that, that any considerations for the first nibble of the payload should purely be for backward compatibility. Is that is that fair? Because it, on the thread we had, um, it, it, it looked very much like people wanted to continue to use that as a design sector for the future. I, I don't think it's viable to use that nibble as anything other than it's not IP. Oh, great. Not unless you want Nanog writing to you and uh, complaining again, which we, we which, uh, how, how, with great that, respect we did need to deal with. Sorry. I mean, yeah, I I, I think it seems that the uh, um, that the main point is for backward compatibility reasons. It may be uh, unwise uh, for for payloads to use the first nibble with a value four. Um, and, and not run into backward compatibility issues. Or six. Six, yes. So, so only for the purpose of backward compatibility, may we need to constrain what the payload is by not being four or six. I think in more, most cases we are doing that. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. No, no, just in, 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 in terms of saying, what is the extent of us bothering about the first nibble. What a summary of that. That's what I was trying to say, right? So not design anything new other than, you know, considering to exclude these values. It's a fair point, but uh, there are also some other code point has already been reserved. So for backward compatibility, maybe it's, it's a, a wise to just uh, maybe request another nibble value to uh, follow the... No, no, no wait, wait a moment, wait a moment, wait a moment, wait a moment. Look, there, are, there are maybe other values we can put there, but I can tell you that there are packets in the wild that can have any value immediately under the MPLS label stack. <laughs> yes, right, and right, right. There right. are definitely, they exist. There's no question they exist because for many years, well, well people still ship uh, Ethernet over directly over MPLS. So if you are a P, P router as opposed to a PE router, PE router, you should be able to tell the difference. But a P router. Um, oh, sorry? Say again? Anyway, a, a, a P router cannot tell whether it's got a, a, a random Ethernet packet carrying out, carried over the MPLS label stack or, so, or, or, or something special. Sure, but what does that mean for the future, right? So are you saying that for the, for, for, the, for the future, I think it means you can't use that first nibble to tell you anything as a P, as a P router. You have to use another technique. Uh, Look, I think the point the point is not using that to indicate so the prototype, but just uh, for the backward compatibility <laughs> reason, you you will need some definitely need some other indicator to to tell what the payload type is. But, but it's, but it's confusion. The, but, it, but it's not the zero. There may be something else there. It may be after the zero. There may be something, but for sure zero does not tell you anything. Let's split it apart, right? So I think, uh, Stuart, your first conclusion for the future, we, we, we must not rely on this. I think that sounds good. That would be great if, if that can all be agreed upon. And then the addendum in terms of should we, you know, do something additional beyond that for backward compatibility reasons still seems to be to be answered. Well, I think we need to find a different solution for um, identifying the... Um, 
the presence of the yeah. I think that, that, that I think that is clear, right? But just saying that you know for the future, um, we will use control plane or something in the MPLS header to uh, to to provide the identification. That doesn't necessarily mean that we do or do not um, try to limit what the payload does for compatibility with you know non upgraded LSRs on the path, right? It's not a question of non-upgraded LSRs, is it? It's a question of um, LSRs anywhere in the network that are sticking packets in with random data after the stack. Exactly. Those, let's say, are the non-upgraded ones. So we want to move forward, but we may need to consider these to be still uh, on the path and potentially doing wrong things when um, they still do their inspection, right? Uh, if I may add, it is not uh, the matter of upgrade because uh, with the EVPN, uh, uh, there are quite a few uh, absolutely new boxes using some quite new forwarding hardware that cannot uh, use uh, the control word in the EVPN solution of the Ethernet frame they say say sent because uh, uh, when it comes to uh, bound packets because these packets are sometimes sometimes require with the VPN an additional label in the VPN encapsulation the so-called ESI label and that competes for hardware resources in the ASIC that does the encapsulation with the control world so uh, it is not a matter. It is not something, something uh, that uh, is going to disappear anytime soon. I believe because we are speaking. I am speaking about really new boxes. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, that was the feedback we got when we tried to make the code control word uh, mandatory, wasn't it? There was. There's lots of stuff out there, particularly in the transport space. I think that um, transport network space that's um, uh, that's doing this. That is because of randomization of MAC address and you know uh, and uh, allocation of zero four zero six starting nibble MAC addresses. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, issue. And, you... and, and when people suggested that to IEEE that they didn't do that, you can imagine what the reaction was. <laughs> so you want to allocate four and six in the MAC address? They do. <laughs> I mean, we wanna we want to reserve these numbers. Uh, we can't. Sure we, we, we can't. can't. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the ship has sailed. The ship has <laughs> sailed. Okay. Uh, so so what, the point I'm hearing is that the problem exists today, uh, and uh, the result of the problem is that uh, uh, load balancing will be incorrect. Uh, I mean, this is one 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 result is, uh, and that we're living with this today, right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, um, I, I I think it's fair to uh, you know the ask to be backward compatible is a fair ask. Um, so whatever we come up with, uh, well, it's not so much backwards compatible. It's that um, if we are not, if we don't take this line, then we better expect a bunch of our packets to be broken. But I mean, given well, how I think that, that behavior of you know the payload inspection was from the point on that you know the um, ECMP extensions were done, considered not to be ideal. You know, isn't there over decades the ability to really retire that old behavior in terms of not caring? I mean, I was at, I was raising it as a question, right? I'm, I'm saying no, that we, 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 we that backward compatibility for a very very long time. Do we need to? Uh, continue it forward, or can we cut it off? No, I think in practice it's going to be in the network for the foreseeable future. I mean, it's a per it's been a perfectly legitimate technique, and um, I mean, no one's no one's even no one has ever delegitimized it. So you've got to expect it to be there for the whole of the deployment lifetime of the current uh, ASICs and more. So I mean, so the I mean, you know, the 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 issue is for us to find some other way that doesn't rely on um, um, 
that uh, that first nibble be meaning anything other than who knows what it is, but it's not IP. Yeah, I agree with that. So we we should just uh, agree. I, I agree, but but there is one thing extra. I think that uh, uh, Tordless is asking uh, is if we define the special header that comes after the MPLS uh, MPLS uh, label stack. This special header should not start with a value four, and that's, you know, that, 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 that's a, that's yeah. a straight four or four or six. Sorry, I mean that yeah. for the first nibble that we come up with for the special header should not be four or six. Well, I think it's going to be zero, isn't it? That seems to I be mean, the tradition. I, I, it's a question that I put there, but if we yeah. agree, then yeah. Well. If we want to uh, exclude um, some numbers, then I will uh, throw five um, to number excluded because it's uh, yeah. allocated for beer over MPLS. Yeah, the yeah, idea I mean, is I, you know, exclude whatever, whatever is allocated for backward compatibility. I think that is what, what he was trying to uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So, but, but, but the point is that. Uh, you know, we may or may not have a view as to what that number, first number, should be, but we can't rely on it to know what is uh, going on there. Because uh, if beer was only relying on the five, then it's going to get messed up with or going to get confused with Ethernet packets that start with five. Well, actually, in the beer case, the five was chosen uh, for the pur purpose of uh, the value zero as well. Basically, it indicates. It's not an IP packet. When it, being B number five actually it, it actually is no different from being number zero there. So why did you use it out of interest? I mean, just so that we understand the you know, what we're dealing with here. Why did you use five rather than zero? Probably just to to distinguish from the uh, from the uh, pseudo wire control rules, things like that. I I forgot the exact reason, but as far as I I understand it, we just want to make sure that this beer header. It's not treated as IPv4 or IPv6. I don't think that for beer we were expecting or, you know, could fear any kind of undesirable packet inspection, right? Well, uh, 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 when, let's say you have a tunnel of beer packet uh, uh, through some uh, uh, pass where, it's, uh, for example, you do not support beer. And those transit routers on that tunnel may treat the, the beer header as IP header. If, 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 if that it didn't start with uh, mm -hmm. with five or zero. No, no, understood. That's true, but I don't think uh, for 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 our new um, header extension we need to avoid five. I um, I agree that uh, we we do not need to avoid five. It's but since the beer or uh, Already, a specified is going to use five. I I agree with the uh, with, uh, with Greg that uh, we we should avoid any number that is already assigned. So Can we agree well, on the zero value. I mean, rather than saying avoid uh, x, y, and z, uh, why why not just say I don't know what is the payload, uh, which is zero. Yeah, I agree with that. Yes. Yeah, and then you 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 may have you may know from some other means, but the important thing is you can't tell from that first nibble what it is. Exactly, yes. I agree. Yeah. I also think that zero is a better choice. I think. No, I completely yeah. agree that zero is a great value there, and it's a good semantic. I think it would just be good to uh, capture in what we're writing the reasons not to use other values and i think the risk if it was four or six is completely different than if it was five for example we do know explicit you know ecmp behavior if there was four or six and we are quite certain that that would not happen if it was five that is true so I think what this is the, the the critical thing is not that first that first um, nibble value, other than to note all kinds of undesirable things that can happen. The critical thing is to figure out how we know that what follows the bottom of stack is something special from the label stack, mm -hmm. because the 
um, the the bottom label basically tells you how you're going to process the payload, and that that's true whether it's an IP packet or an or an or a uh, pseudo wire packet. So the yeah 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 I think. Uh... I agree. Yeah, uh, and in fact, uh, when we get to the GDF, then you, uh, you uh, I can tell, I can say that uh, the, the the GDF proposal follows very very well the, the, this uh, this model and the concept here. Well, well, um, as I say, I, 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 so the GDF proposal uses. How do you put the next header uh, value there? You put a uh, special label, or how is it? Uh, uh, well, yeah, we we can see we can we can talk about that once once I start sharing some slides. Okay. So, so back to uh, Stewart's question: Would an indicator in the label stack be useful? Like a, a, a without defining what the indicator is, uh, I think this is what I heard: is something in the label stack indicates or alerts of the presence of a special header after the. So there always has to be something in the label stack. Now, whether it's a special purpose label or whether or, or, or whether it's just done through the top of stack fact, the position holds that the label stack has to tell you uh, that um, if you want to do anything in the P router, the label stack has to tell the P router that uh, it, it is to do this and it is safe to do this. As I say, and that can either be a fact or it can be a special purpose label somewhere in the stack. On the fact idea, the challenge there is that you you need a different fact. You know, if you have an LSP to reach a, a, a specific endpoint, you need to allocate a fact for that endpoint without the indicator and a fact with the indicator. So it will it has a scalability impact. Um, right, right. But but the the it is indeed the case that, that that we need to consider that when we decide how to do how to to do this indication but the fundamental principle is that the stack has to tell us some way or other that the p router is to process something beyond the end of stack and it has to also uh, implicitly or explicitly tell it how to, it knows what that thing beyond the end of stack is yes I'll capture this. So right. I think that is that is an absolute fundamental to the MPLS design that one of the labels before the top of stack has to be set up in such a way that it tells the P router that that what follows is something for it to process if it is required to process it. If the P router is not required to do it, then uh, the only requirement is that either a label a label of some sort tells the PE router what to do. But it's also a requirement that unconditionally the PE router has to know um, what it is to do with the information beyond the end of stack because um, it's either going to forward it as an IP packet or it's going to process it as a pseudo wire or it's going to go and dispose or process some metadata stroke meta instructions or whatever we call it. So there are two requirements. There's a requirement for the P router to unconditionally know from the stack that something is 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 afoot, and the P E router must unconditionally know from the stack that something's afoot. And they may not, they may or may not be the same indicator. But if you have a special label uh, uh, as an indicator, then it serves both purposes. Only oh. if you can, only if you well, so only if you get down there to find it, but. Of course, if you're going to process the metadata, you 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 have to be able to go that deep in the packet anyway. I I have a question, Stuart. Uh, if a packet traverses a router that is not supporting this new mechanism that we right. will come up with, is it acceptable that we forward the packet as usual today? Of course. Uh, so that depends on the function, right? So. If the function, if the net, if the designer of the application, the designer of the network, um, is just putting the stuff in as advisory and gather the information, etc., where you can, then absolutely you want a legacy router to just forward the packet. But if it is important to you that every router on the path do this operation, for example, because you are trying to find the accumulated dwell time in the um, 
in the in the packet or because you want to do IOEM for every hop in the packet then it's kind of not acceptable that you went through a legacy router that had ignored this and that's something we need to get our heads around because um, you could argue that you should never give a packet to a router that can't do what you expect to do with it right validation and the and capability uh, yes yeah yeah. So it all depends on how important that service is. You see, there's two schools of thought in fast reroute. Right? One of which is your, your job is to just get the packets there unconditionally. Who cares when they get there as long as they get there? And there's another school of thought, which I argue is equally valid and, and it is applicable kind of to this to the philosophy we're discussing here, that uh, if I set up a policy, then I expect everyone on the policy to uh, to abide by the policy. Uh, from my point of view, there is one principal decision which should be made here. Uh, should it be possible to look in extension headers in metadata, etc., should it be possible on the P route on transit? Or should it be only for PE? Because only for PE, it's easy to add the additional label and that's it, and everything is fine. But but, but for P router, we have uh, much less number of options which we could do. Therefore, in principle, we should decide, should we give the capability for this extension header to be checked in the transit node? Well, we have RFC 8169 that, that, that definitely looks at the metadata in a P router. And we have the IOAM uh, group of P proponents who definitely want a P router to look there. So we have a, a, a we have a standard track RFC, and we have a, a a a set of emerging use cases that want P routers to actually process information uh, below the bottom of stack. Okay, it's very logical. It's very it's expected answer from my side. Then I don't understand how any label could help because any label for P router will be not possible to understand what it means because it has local significant significance for ingress and egress PE. For that reason, then label will not help, right? Oh, well, hang on a second. So a special purpose label special may help. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. That's one case. Right. Or. A, 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 a different feck at the top of stack, which is how we did it in uh, 8169, would also do it. So those are the only two ways you can tell that a, a P router can tell, um, either from the feck or from a special purpose label somewhere in the label stack. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, could I propose a very, very small proposition? What if we will call this uh, metadata as enhanced header uh, to be very similar to IPv6? Because it's for, for the same purpose. Okay, uh, the structure may be different here. Well, well, yeah, I, I, that, that's my concern with calling it an EH because people have an expectation as what that is. And I'm not convinced that the EH design is the best we can do. Oh, of course, we should do differently, but why not to keep the same name? Uh, it would be not IPv6 enhanced header, but MPLS enhanced header. The, fir the first word MPLS would be different. MPLS enhanced header. Yeah, they're called extension headers in V6, by the way. Okay, extension, yeah. Okay, MPLS extension here. Yeah. Yeah. Why not to call the same? Okay, of course, structure would be different, yeah. Oh, well, that's a good reason for calling it something different. <laughs> Because people have a huge expectation as to what an extension header mechanism looks like. So but I mean, maybe I'm not going to die in the ditch over this, but I'm just warning of the issue. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm extended header or special header or, I mean, I don't think we should uh, debate the name now, but exactly, uh, but we should come up with a name eventually. Oh. But you're right, it, it needs to be something other than metadata. It needs to be something more descriptive for the for, for, the, for the rich set of services that could go in there. Okay. So answers on a postcard, please. Uh, we have we have you, Stuart, updating us on your finding on the history of first nibble allocation. So I, I rebuilt to add there, I think. Anything to add? I rebuilt the PC that had the email that had all the email on and I couldn't find any email that was appropriate. Um, I think really we need to go and have this discussion with the intadees at some stage to see if they have any views on this. So maybe we need uh, maybe the chairs need to write formally to the intadees and explain the issue and ask if they have a view. Mm. 
Okay, I'll think. I can help you write. I can help you write the note if you want, but I do think it would be appropriate to get their opinion because um, um, I am worried that uh, about this clap potential clash. Okay, but I couldn't find it. I did go and look, and I couldn't find it. All right. Uh... I took that action item. Uh, um, we went over these two bullets here. Uh, um, I think um, we can talk about the generic delivery function, um, Jeffrey, as a, yeah, as a, that's one solution, but I don't wanna, you know, hint that this is, I mean, let me put it out. Do, do is there interest in in uh, going over the GDF or general generic delivery function as a, as a means for this uh, solving this problem? Well, we should clearly give Jeffrey the chance to explain to us all. And I I don't know whether everyone was here last time he explained it. We should certainly give him the opportunity to explain it. But I do think, as you said, we need to reserve judgment on whether we would select this um, solution. Uh, and we should be encouraging others to put forward uh, alternatives because we'll live for this for a very long time. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I'll note this down and I'll, uh, I'll pass the ball back to you, uh, Jeffrey. Go ahead with the slides that you prepared, if, if you have. Okay, great. Thank you. So, uh, I am sharing my slide. Do you, do you see it? Yes, do now. Okay. So, uh, let, me let me first give a, a background on this. It, it actually started the, for, for a different reason. We noticed that uh, some IP functions, they can be actually be viewed as independent of IP. Uh, examples uh, for, uh, like uh, fragmentation, ESP. And later, we also think that uh, IOAM is one of those things as well. So what if we extract those functions out and apply them to any layer, whether it's IP layer, MPOS layer, beer, or even Ethernet? So that's the thought, and what we call this uh, generic, uh, generic delivery functions. They say uh, between any two points at layer two, layer three, layer 2.5, whatever layer. Um, initially, uh, we were talk, uh, thinking about the two points, uh, for example, the uh, LSP ingress, egress, beer ingress, egress, uh, IP source de destination nodes, things like that. Um, that's so in the IOM terms, that's like the edge to edge uh, functions. Um, hop by hop, things um, we have not really th thought about it yet. Or maybe we'll think about it and see if they can apply. But at this moment, it's mainly edge to edge. Um, so, so good. Okay, so how is it related to? Uh, to, to the topic for today. Um, obviously, we want this GDF to be applicable to, uh, to be used with MPOS data plan. And we also like to see that some proposed MPOS extensions to use GDF when they are generic and not really MPOS specific. Um, so that's why we want to uh, raise, uh, uh, bring people's attention to this. Um, there are some implications that we already uh, talked about uh, today. For example, we need a label to indicate that a GDF a header or, or follows. And uh, in that header, uh, we want to set that the first label to be 0000. And then there is a relationship with uh, GACH. Uh, we are, uh, that was already talked about in the email list uh, and in, in the previous presentations. Okay. Um, it's a little bit of history. Um, so it was originally uh, targeted at the, the transport area and it was presented in 109 and then morphed into uh, uh, the inter area. Or, 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 uh, the uh, drafts um, that in that version, 
we addressed issues that Stuart pointed out, uh, uh, um, um, and we presented it in the, the one term. Um, by the way, uh, Stuart's uh, primer uh, um, uh, draft was referring to the older version that that, uh, that did not have those uh, problems addressed, but and, but in the current version, those problems have been addressed. Um, so now in this uh, yesterday, I posted a zero one version. Uh, we have uh, Greg Mursky joined as a co-author with, with editorial changes. Um, we removed uh, um, the label signaling because in the previous version, we didn't re uh, use a special label. Uh, we, so we will we, we will signal uh, 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 regular labels to indicate the GDF for H that follows. But now we think that uh, the working group, uh, if this is adopted, I mean, this uh, uh, solution is adopted, then, then the, I think the working group will be uh, 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 open to use a special label. So for now, we just got rid of the label segment uh, text. The most important change in this version is that we adjust the header format a little bit to better align with GCH. Um, in fact, uh, uh, if needed, we could treat this uh, uh, generic delivery function header as a GSH uh, uh, header. Um, in, in particular, currently the ch uh, channel type is uh, 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 two octave long, and that can be viewed as a tuple with uh, the uh, next header followed by this header. So it will become clear in the next slide. So this is the, uh, um, the header format. Started with 000 nibble uh, uh, with reserved uh, four base there and then header length. Then it has a next header and this header. This header basically tells that uh, what this particular header is about. Is it for a generic fragmentation? Is it for IOM or for whatever? And the next header will tell, tell us uh, uh, what up, comes after this, uh, uh, this uh, header. The, it could be another GDFH or could, it could be uh, the real payload, for example, IP or Ethernet or whatever. That's why I say that uh, this is actually is uh, uh, as a byproduct will uh, allow us to tell what the uh, uh, the payloads comes after MQS label stack, whether it's a, 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 a some um, a, a metadata, if they are put in this GDFH, or if it's some other the uh, IP or Ethernet the real payloads. So um, this is the idea. So um, now about first level. In, the, in this proposal, the only purpose is to prevent a transit node from mistaking this as an IP header. Um, so as long as it's not zero or four, or no, no, it's not a four or six, it's fine from, G, from GDFH's point of view. But I think we, we were in, our, in, in, in earlier discussion, I think we are leading towards zero, 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 right? So basically whatever the working group deem, deems appropriate, it's fine with us. Um, so at the third bullet here, we already talked about it. So um, by using this uh, GDFH, um, we can tell what comes after the the, uh, uh, the, the bottom of the BOS label, whether it's in, uh, some G, um, other GDF or one by one chain together or the, uh, uh, the real uh, uh, payloads. Uh, IP or MPOS or whatever, that can be easily done. This is a, uh, uh, another example, um, the generic fragmentation. So we have the uh, next header, oops, that tells that if another uh, GDFH header follows or if it's an IP load, and this header says that it's a fragmentation, and there are fields uh, there for fragmentation purposes. And now, if you if you want to indicate uh, uh, um, the the real payloads after this uh, uh, one, you can use the next header. And even if when you do not, uh, uh, even if you don't use the fragmentation, you can still use the fragmentation uh, uh, header to indicate the uh, payload type that comes uh, after that. So 
in that case, then identification or offset, all those fields are just zero. But of course, if we deem that this is a, a good feature to have to indicate what a, a real payload is after the MPS label step, then we can define a, a, a real a, a, a code point to, uh, just for that purpose instead of relying on, on this fragmentation method. So anyway, this is just a byproduct. So this is basically the, the, the high level overview. I have quite some backup slides uh, uh, I don't have to go through, but this just explains how we view that uh, we can use uh, uh, this to, to, uh, to support IOM, uh, if, at least for the uh, edge to edge uh, uh, scenario. Uh, hop by hop, we need to think about it further. Um, this is the example where we can have many uh, uh, things lumped together. We can have uh, IOM, we can have uh, 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 fragmentation GDF or any GDF, or with, uh, uh, and then followed by a pseudo wire or, or plus G GACH, all those things. Um, uh, and then we talk about how uh, we can uh, use GACH to, 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 to do GDF. Uh, if we extend the GSH uh, to uh, to uh, data uh, uh, traffic as well, currently it's only door traffic. But these but are I, some other details we can talk about further. Yeah. I think that we changed that gal not carrying user traffic stuff in eighty one sixty nine, didn't we, Greg? Um, I'm not sure. I, it's, it's still holding. Yeah, Greg. I don't yes. know. Is that true? Uh, the 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 the, uh, the gash used for uh, OEM only. No, not not in eighty one sixty nine because that's how your is it's done on live traffic and your um, uh, the residence time, aren't you? Well, uh, what we carry, we carry only. Well, it, it's in eighty one sixty nine. It carries um, PTP control messages. So. In, in fact, it might be viewed as carrying um, control information. So I, I looked at uh, 5589 uh, uh, wording so that should not carry uh, anything but uh, control management OEM messages. And PTP is control protocol. Right, so I think uh, uh, in the email, email, uh, email discussion, my impression was that some people were open uh, to uh, uh, extend that to use uh, for data traffic as well. So this is just to say that if that is the case, uh, if that is open to, to, you for, uh, to for use by data traffic, then the GDF can use the GSH mechanism. Uh, could I have a question about uh, this particular uh, draft? Um, what would be uh, in the last one next header? Uh, probably it would be IPv6, IP, IPv4 indication, something like this, right? It could be that, or you could you could just say that uh, it's um, uh, uh, have a value that does not tell what, what, what the, the, uh, the 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 real uh, payload type. It does not matter. Uh, yeah, because uh, it could also be a pseudo wire, couldn't it? In that in that stack that he showed. Yes, it could be another label stack. Yeah, is it here? Oh, yeah, yeah you can't see, of course. Um, probably not here. Probably previous slide. So, but that one there, that one there's got two stacks, right? Right. So the first one, uh, the, the first stack says that uh, it is is for uh, IOM, and next uh, followed by a uh, um, followed by a GDF, and then after that, it's the next header is MPOS. So it's another label stack, which happens to be a pseudo wire label. Because uh, there are some duplicity here. I mean, next header, uh, this header, it's. Uh... It's, it's, it's some duplicity. Uh, you, you don't need that double this information. Maybe it's possible to use just uh, this here there, and it would be enough. Um, well, actually, this uh, uh, 
I think it's important to be able to have this next header to, to, to point out what comes after this. For example, when you have multiple uh, 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 headers, whether it's a GDF or some other things, I think it's, it's, it's important to have that. I think last time when we talked about uh, uh, GSH, uh, if we want to have multiple GSH header for whatever reason, then and, uh, and the assigning the channel type will become uh, become uh, messy uh, if you if we just use uh, current one fields uh, uh, two active fields. But okay. If you okay. Break that into two fields, then become it becomes become very easy. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So the, the next header is obviously the protocol space, right? IANA protocol space, uh, the one byte. Um, but the GDF type here. Uh, is it uh, is it also you are seeking from the protocol space, uh, the IP protocol space, the regular protocol space? No, or this header is the, the, this header is local. Local, right? Local. That is G. I think instead of this header, maybe it's a GDF type. You are saying basically. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah I think that will be easy to understand. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll change that. And uh, the uh, and as earlier Stuart mentioned. The label stack, both PE routers and P routers, should be able to identify that uh, GDF is being followed here. So you need to have a special label or uh, fact need to be there. That that is common for this proposal. Is it that documented or no? Um, so uh, that, the the initial the version um, um, has a, a, a signaling to to use a regular uh, label for the for the egress uh, uh, node to know that it is uh, GDF uh, follows. Um, if we want to do, to extend this to uh, hard by hard behavior, which in the, in which we need more thinking, and, um, that okay. a special label will be uh, appropriate. Okay, thanks, hey, Jeffrey. I, uh, if an idea or a thought, uh, can you carry a uh, gash uh, uh, gash header in, inside the GDF uh, header? Yeah, he, he, has, he did. He, Oh, yeah. he did. He did. Okay, sorry. Maybe I must. Uh, okay, so that is well, that. Well, well, do you want to show that pseudo wire again? I think you should, you did have it, didn't you? Just be sure. That one, right? So presumably that could have been. All right, the the PW label could be a gal. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's a gal. And the the thing that follows, uh, he's shown it as carrying. A zero zero one and an ACH, but presumably it could have been uh, four zeros and then a, a pseudo wire payload. Yes. Here I I see that he encapsulated another MPLS header, a complete MPL. So this is yep. a first MPLS header, another MPLS header. But what I yep. was what I meant is you have a GDF header. And uh, you know, inside of it, there's possibly the first or a second uh, he subheader is the gash. Yes, uh, the, right now the this slide is like that. But uh, I think uh, yeah. so that the GDF actually uh, can and GSH can actually very much uh, emerge or integrate it. I'm I'm actually open to uh, to using the uh, existing GSH. Uh, uh, format to, to 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 do this, but as long as we we actually make this uh, uh, truly generic, so that the same thing can be used for non MPOS as well. I think we we can we, that can be that can be done. First try, Balaj Varga. My question would be about the impact on the existing implementation. Uh, so with that, you practically hide the pseudo wire label. So that means all the correct ECMP implementation, which considered only the pseudo wire label and does not look inside the packet, but is inside that, uh, they will not be able to do ECMP because your GDFH indicator label will be the same and would be assumed as a service label. Right. So the fact yeah. that the, the, the label stack. So the fat pseudo wire doesn't work anymore, but I was going to actually generalize this because I, I had a very similar sort of observation, which is that um, you can really, the, the P routers cannot see any of that second label stack. And so you'd better make sure there's nothing that they need to know that you've hidden from them. 
and if there if it is you have to reproduce it in some other way earlier in the label stack so ecmp is 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 um is certainly one of those uh, certainly it would also apply if um i suppose if there was a um an entropy label down there you couldn't see it yeah this actually goes back to a uh, tortoise comments uh going forward in a modern network it's better for the for the for the ecmp to uh to, to base on new uh, new solutions but as long as we make sure that uh, the, the legacy uh, boxes do not uh, uh, mistakenly uh, to, uh, uh, treat a non-ip uh, packet as ip packet as long as we satisfy that requirement, I think uh, it, 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 it's good to, to, to move to more modern uh, solutions. Well, we've got the entropy label is the is the method of choice um, yeah. for ECMP in, in pure MPLS. Right. Oh, you might not be your... the best thing we want to do in the future, right? I mean, right, 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 right. But but any new solution has got to displace the the, the, the existing one. Yes. Um, so oh, I, I have sorry, some um, high-level um, mm -hmm. comment on 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 the GDFH. So first of all, I think the ambition is 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 great. Um, I think that um, generic would to me only be you know a good label if if this was really proposed and accepted not only to be used for MPLS but also for IPv4 and IPv6. And we know how difficult it is to get something new in there especially for IPv4. Um, if, if, if we don't have that ambition, then um, I think we should stick to, to saying something like label stack independent extension header or so with, you know, the yeah. ability to be um, used uh, with other protocols, um, but uh, not with our intent to go there at this point in time, which I think is still um, a, a very useful thing to do, which is basically saying, okay, Let's make sure that we don't put anything into this type of extension header that would tie it to MPLS. Um, so at that point in time, then comes, I think, really that question, which I think uh, Jeff was also alluding in a side sentence to, which is how, what's, what's the mechanism by which we um, determine who has to look into it? And if we have multiple of those, in which order? Um, because the, the way, for example, and how this was done in IPv6 with, oh, this particular hop by hop header goes first, then comes this other header. And so that is very convoluted and bad. And I don't think that the current proposal here has any better, um, you know, solution to that problem of specifying the, you know, semantic relationship between multiple headers um, in some offline RFC that, you know, is, is really hard to ensure being implemented consistently across the um, uh, the different uh, platforms. So that's, I think, something we can certainly learn from IPv6 on how not to do it when we want to do this. Um, so I think that's that's the first thing. And then I think the, the, the biggest thing of my worries is that um, this um, draft currently doesn't attempt to define a um, must be supported encoding structure for uh, the data inside the header. And I think that is really crucial and important because I really want to stop um, us having to go through the trouble of every time we do another, you know, uh, extension header or even a new uh, TLV in an extension header to argue whether or not that can be supported by existing hardware parsers, right? So I'd really love to have a, you know, standardized parsing um, requirements that, you know, in terms of, oh, this must be able to support 8, 16, 32 bit values, and maybe even, you know, we need to be able to support TLVs, LVs, or just values, right? So, I mean, values being the classical thing that IPv6 was doing, but um, I think TLVs being the most flexible one. So, I think that type of encoding that we want to have in, in such an extension header, I think would really be good to be put on the table as, as, as an work item. Those can definitely be add, added. Those details. So right now it, it's at it, it's infant stage. Uh, basically, this idea, this concept, uh, if it gets accepted uh, by, by 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 most people here, then we can work on it together and in more details. And um, about the uh, uh, the term generic, uh, I do not know how we can re uh, much we can really do for IPv4 
or IPv6, but at least uh, I can see that uh, this is a very good uh, thing to have for, for beer. And uh, uh, I do not know how people are view uh, uh, the idea of doing, using this for IOM, IOAM, but I think that uh, um, it's a good, a good idea. And if that uh, uh, is accepted, then and I would say this uh, using the CDF for IOM is applicable for both MPOS and IPv4. So, uh, so uh, right. So I think, think even so, just for the purpose of understanding that the flexibility is sufficient, it would be good to understand how would one do with this, you know, type of extension headers, the functions that we already have in extensions headers in V4 and V6, not saying that that need to be standardized or, or be put somewhere high in the priority list, but just as a validation point of the flexibility, right? And I, with respect to, you know, um, the encoding and all these other things, may, maybe maybe it's better instead of trying to have a, uh, you know, um, single uh, document for all these aspects to to consider that uh, you know we we have multiple different building blocks right so one of the building blocks is you know how do we what's what's the semantic interlinking multiple um, extension headers um, the other one is what is the encoding of you know the data within an extension header um, and the third one I think then is well what are specific semantic um, uh, extension header uh, that uh, that that we want to prioritize working on. Honest, I think uh, it's kind of uh, infeasible to try to define the structure of the, each header because uh, you know, uh, for example, for the IOM is totally developed developed in another working group and they have no idea where it will be used. So the best we we can do is just uh, uh, to to indicate the, the type of the header, but we can not do further things as, uh, such as uh, um, to defining the inner structure of each header. Why not? I think that I mean, might they, be the code. We, we, have been, we have been doing standardized parsing um, and um, you know, uh, uh, modeling of, of that, uh, both on the uh, management plane with Yang. We have done it with the CBOR CDDL in the control plane. Um, none of uh, these uh, imply a specific semantic of what uh, what you define, right? That's that's part to the use case and individual specs, and uh, defining the permissible structure, data types, sixteen bit, eight bit, and so on. I think that is core and important because if you look at, um, for example, standardized you know models for forwarding hardware, let's say what can you do with P4, then you immediately stumble into the point that uh, because all the past forwarding plane protocols were just list of fixed length values, um, the the language uh, to program the forwarding plane like P4 doesn't support, for example, TLVs in the same fashion as it support list of Vs. Right, and so when we put a stake in the ground and saying that an extension header um, must be able to support this, then we're also driving the industry to um, build the better uh, forwarding plane programming languages and parsers. Yeah, but uh, we, for the reality, we already have a quite a few, um, you know, such kind of header defined. Also, uh, for each, many of these, they are. Are already very flexible. For example, they can support optional TLVs. Of, of but after the always, we, so you know, I, I think it's kind of a beyond the scope for uh, MPOS to define what the service we can also. No, I, I I I completely disagree. MPLS was the first one that defined by itself through the label stack architecture very flexible and must be able to implement a, a dynamic structure of a header right and if we're simply thinking that uh, continuing to go on with extension headers in the way that ipv6 has done it will simply uh, you know fall into exactly the same trap that ipv6 ran into which is very inconsistent very incomplete uh, support of extension headers I, I, I see the arguments for, from both sides. Uh, um, I also heard from uh, hardware guys that uh, having TLV uh, in, uh, in fast pass is, uh, is not uh, uh, very, uh, well, it's not that, uh, 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 what's the word? 
it's, it, it's, it's more difficult to do. But anyway, I, I think I think we need to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. talk about uh, this. I think Today. I think we can do better than TLVs. I've got, I've got a proposal to make um, at a future meeting. Um, the, the the but I can tell you for sure that TLVs have been taken out of active specifications in, or well, certainly in TMPLS. I'm oh, sorry, MPLSTP rather, MPLSTP, because of the difficulty of implementing them. No one wanted to use them. And I think that that's a good discussion to have, right? All I'm saying is that we can have what is feasible next generation parsing hardware uh, up front and not intermixing it with the semantics that's basically what we've done all in the past and that's what made ipv6 extension headers um so unsuccessful right because you didn't take the this is permissible this is agreed upon um uh, syntactic encoding um you know you didn't take that out of the picture and and agreed on that up front. Well, the other thing is that, that, is that the firewall people hated them, and at least we're only working in a limited domain with this design. The problem with the MPLS stuff is that you know firewall people hate MPLS even more because it's not self descriptive but comes through the control plane, which the firewall may not be aware of. Right. So if we <laughs> Yeah, but we never send MPLS through a firewall, right? We only use MPLS in a controlled domain or um, a, 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 the controlled domain of a friend. I, I think it is a good question of, of saying, well, is, is there something where functions like or similar to a firewall is something we want to be able to support better? And if so, how, right? And something like self-descriptive um, is always uh, the way on how firewalls like these things right so firewalls uh, you know have been um parsing you know a lot of protocol specs and always have done better when it's self-descriptive in the packets so i mean that in favor of tlv right i, I completely agree that for the high speed forwarding hardware especially of the past tlvs were more difficult but i think that is that is also just a myth for for current hardware or next generation hardware, right? I think we're proliferating historical data by not taking the step of, of, of adding more flexibility. I think this is a good discussion that we're having uh, towards the end of our meeting today. Um, we, we, I don't think we concluded on, is it a strict encoding or is it, or should we leave the encoding of the headers uh, lenient or flexible? So I, uh, some action items for the next meeting is maybe we come back to this and uh, we discuss uh, this further you, advantages and disadvantages. Um, could I make a comment to finish this particular slide? Could I make a comment about this particular slide? I see here a little oh, oh slide has disappeared, uh, but um, um, I see here on this particular last slide a little bit improvement because uh, what I see here is LTTV type uh, to type is two times uh, and i'm still not, not, not happy about redundancy but uh, what i have additionally understood that if uh, you will put uh, just after zero byte okay in the beginning you have to have zero byte to to have compatibility with old platforms and just after zero byte uh, you will put next header the first next header which is really about next uh, header not related to any film not just next header and then next structure next structure would be uh, only one next here which is really next header. I mean, in this case, you could you could cancel this redundancy, and uh, I don't understand why in this particular picture uh, for second stuff, which is GDF uh, X Y Z stuff, for second stuff you have zero byte again. Why you need here zero byte again? The first time you need zero byte. I don't understand why uh, not to bring. Uh, I think that's just so that it looks the same as the previous one, isn't it? Uh, no, 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 no. I think I think it's so you could push one of those and then push another. Uh, yeah, but you could treat zero byte as something special, which is not uh, participate uh, in your um, uh, metadata. Uh, you could treat it as something special in no, your metadata. You're, you're, you're right. You could have another value in this as it is shown. But if what you wanted to do, and I don't know whether it's a valid case or not, is to push these things at different uh, stages in the passage of the uh, packet through the network, then um, having the uh, the identical um, uh, subheader, whatever it's called, 
uh, is of some value. Mm, Starting yeah. with zero. Starting so, with the zero nibble. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah it's, it's pretty horrible what you have to do to get it there. But you could, it, the, the, what he's got is the same header and he just pushes the same header each time. And there is some merit in that, for sure. But when you push uh, the header again on the transit node, for example, uh, you push the header with some offset. You calculate offset in hardware and push header. And to calculate your offset, uh, you could calculate offset as a previous header plus uh, one byte, which is which is redundant, which is zero byte, which we should keep. Uh, and then it's, it's the same easy. I don't understand the challenge. Uh, you just I, I, I think I think he, I think the point he is making uh, um, is that. We can add as many of these as we want, and if we make them all the same, we don't have to worry about whether we've added one or we've added ten. Yes, we 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 treat them as the same. Yes, we treat yes. them as the same. But the previous one byte we treat as not the one which uh, belongs to this particular structure. The zero byte is just something not not, not related to uh, to us, and we oh. everything else will treat the same. Well, wait, wait a moment, right? So, look, if he only pushed the GDFXYZ stuff, then the packet would look like from that zero zero in front of it down, wouldn't it? I mean, I think we we can agree on that. Uh, no, no, be a label no. stack followed by. It, it, it's... The first zero, which is for IOM before IOM. Before no, 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 no. Supposing of course, of course, it's suppose, needed. Supposing he one. Supposing he only pushed the second one, not the first one. Okay, but uh, if you will push second one, uh, because you just open uh, the metadata, you just open new header. Probably you need to add some indicator that you have this header, right? And when you will add this indicator, you will add this zero byte which you should you should right. add. Right, right, right. And I think all this is saying is that there is some merit in using the same header each time you push one of these options on. But in reality, okay. you need you need to push zero only when you add the indicator, G D F F H right, right, indicator. Right. So, but unless you've got some unless you've got some use for those four zeros, then why would you not want to make the header always the same? But it's just additional wastage of information, wastage of packet size, wastage well, of... Well, yeah, yeah, but, but it, also, it also maintains, and I don't know whether we should do this, it also, uh, uh, I can see reasons for not doing it, right? Um, it also maintains 32-bit alignment, which may or may not be important. Okay, there. Okay, for alignment, yes, I do understand you, but uh, for alignment... Um, it's still a good question. Do you uh, is it possible to keep alignment? Because yes, your MPLS label label stack is probably aligned to four bytes. Okay, it's it's fine. But before these four bytes, uh, um, it's questionable what 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 you have and how how long it would be before these four bytes. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Maybe I mean, so, you will not achieve this anyway because you so have MAC the, address. So, so yeah, what which, is the so what is the advantage? It, we should not start. not we should not, come not to waste additional uh, yeah, space. Well, you don't waste. Apologies, uh, we have we have already exceeded the, yeah, yeah. the time that we allot uh, allotted. It's a, it's a very good discussion. I did note down uh, your point, uh, Edward, uh, about you know redundant nib first nibble in uh, multiple. Second, second, ways. second. I'm I'm second. Redundant second. First one is needed. Second no, no, one. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, mean, you mean the yeah, redundant yeah. first nibble in this in in the second yeah, 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 one yeah. more instance. The second one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Second yeah, yeah. and and the third and so on. And okay. additionally, uh, and, and additionally, if you will follow yeah. my logic and add after first uh, redundant byte, which is needed, of course. After this, you will add the next header, which would be additional next header, just next header for start all this story. Then, then even next, uh, even TT. I mean, it's LTT value. TT will be reduced to LTV. Uh, you don't need to two time two, two time types. Maybe I will put it in the alias. Uh, what I mean here, but uh, okay. So in the first one we need this header, but in subsequent ones we don't need this header. Uh, in first one, it would be related not just to uh, the first IOM stuff. It would be related to zero stuff. So uh, we will edit here in the beginning three bytes. Well, which, one byte. which which TTL did you want to get rid of? Uh, every because here is LTTV. I would like to 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 have here everywhere LTV, and it looks like I have a proposal how to achieve this because right now it's LTTV. Uh, oh, LT. 
LTV. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And and, and right, I would exactly. like to, to make it LTV. And I, I will send the alias how, how I propose to change yeah. it here. Yeah. That's a good idea. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I, I agree on the LTV. And if you go and look at the TCR draft that um, we put over in RTGWG, that gives you some really good reasons why LTV is, a, is actually a better structure. And it's possible from my point of view, even here on this particular slide. Uh, let me send you, yeah. Mm. I will stop the recording now. Thank you, everybody, for attending. This was a very good uh, discussion. Thanks all. Okay.